Let's stand up and behold the Lamb tonight. Just put your hands up. Just reach out to the Lamb. The great I Am. Behold the Lamb of God, Jesus. Worship Him tonight. Hallelujah. Put your hands way up high and just worship Him tonight. Praise you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the Lamb. Thank you for coming. Thank you for saving us. Thank you that you sent your Holy Spirit. Thank you, God, that we're serving you, that you've called us out from all nations and kindreds and tongues to behold the Lamb of God, our Savior. We praise you tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Let's give him a big clap tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He defeated the devil. He gives us the victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let me tell you, we're all fighting, but let me tell you something. All of us struggle against the devil in one way or another, but he won the victory on the cross. He won. We win. We win. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. We're winners in Jesus. Glory to God. You can sit down. If, if you can sit down, praise God. Hallelujah. I want to read one verse of scripture to you tonight found in the book of Psalms, 119th Psalm and the 11th verse. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. The power of the word of God in your heart if I were to tell you tonight that I knew where you could find, and the women especially would like this, a perfect diamond free, a one carat, one and a half carat diamond that's perfect. Now, there are not many of those. Now, men don't know that, but women know that, I know. There's not many, very rare, the perfect diamonds are very rare, but you could have that diamond free. Do you know how many people would be around me tonight and say, where, do I, where can I get that? Where, where is that? If I were to tell the men tonight, which is true, that if I were to tell you tonight, I knew where you could get a five pound gold brick, that solid gold, and that is free. And I want to tell you where you can find it. You know, you know how the, the crowd, how people would listen to me? Do you know how people would pay attention and say, where, where is it? Now, I want to tell you tonight where you can get the greatest gift. You know what that gift is? A love for the Word of God. What I'm going to tell you tonight in the next few minutes is extremely important. It is so important. What is this book? What is this? This book is God's Word. God's Word. It's, it's the Word of the living God. John 1.1 1, 1 says, And the Word was made flesh. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. It says, In the beginning was the Word. This was in the beginning. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the same was in the beginning with God. And then this Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And God has given us this Word. Now, you know what this Word is? This Word is Jesus in a written form. Jesus was made flesh. The Word was made flesh. It's Jesus Christ. How many times I've said in my life, and maybe you've said it, I said this, 
If only I had Jesus, and especially when I was young, I, I said, if only I could have been there to talk with Jesus. And then I've had situations now, I've said, oh, if only I could talk to Jesus and just hear him and say, Jesus, what, what about this? Do you know what he would say? He would say exactly, exactly what he said in this book. He would say exactly what he said here. He has not changed one bit. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Exactly. He, it doesn't matter the styles. It doesn't matter what's changed. It doesn't matter how the world has changed in all of the modern convenience. That has nothing to do with God. He is exactly the same tonight as when he was on this earth. And if he saw you, he would tell you exactly what he said then. There wouldn't be any difference, none. What he says here is exactly what he is. Now this is Jesus in a written form. It's his word. God, the word was in the beginning. The word became flesh and he gave us this book. He gave you the word. Now, how I pray, and this is what I want you to learn to pray, and maybe you do, I'm sure many of you pray it. God, give me a love for your book, your word. Give me a love for this word. Let me love this word. Just like I say I love you, I've got to love the book because the book and God are the same. You can't really love God and not love his word. They're synonymous. They're the same. I love God, but I don't really like his book. That's dangerous. Ask God for the great gift of loving his word. It is more valuable than diamonds. Believe me, folk, it is worth more to you than diamonds. It's more valuable, the psalmist said in, uh, in the, the early Psalms, he says, it is more precious than fine gold. He said, this is more precious than the most expensive, the best gold. And it's a gift, but you've got to want it. You've got to love it. You've got to wish for it and want it. Pray, God, give me a love for your word. Help me to love it. Now, it's, it's tragic. It is is tragic that you only read this Bible because you should. That's tragic. Because you'll never learn it that way. You'll find excuses. You've got to love the book. You've got to read the Bible because you want to. Because it is God. It is Jesus talking to you. It's his word to you. Now, you know, we eat, we take care. Of, the Bible says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. What is that knowledge? The knowledge is the word of God. People are destroyed for lack of this. You've got to pray that God helps you to love this and get into it. This church is powerful in preaching the word. It's one of the great churches for preaching the word. And I thank God for it. That is not enough. You still have to have a personal relationship and you have to get into this book for yourself. You have to know God for yourself. You've got to get into this and learn to read this word. I pray, God, help me to love the word. But more than love it, help me to enjoy the word of God. Help me to enjoy it. To look forward to it. Hide it in my heart. In the areas of my life. 
because this book is God speaking to you. God is talking to you personally. He's talking to you. He's got a message for you. He wants to talk to you out of this book. Where does this book honor the book? I pray, and I want you to pray this. I pray, God, help me to place the word of God in the right place of honor in my life. It's got to be honored. You have to honor this book. Honor the word of God. Place it in a place of honor. What takes number, what is the number one priority in your life other than going to work? What are the things, where, where is this book in your life? Where, where does the word of God, what place does it have in your life? Do you go days without reading it? Without looking at it? Where is it in your life? Is it in a place of great honor? In a great place that I have, I, I've placed this above television? Above reading, above sports. I'm not against sports. I'm just against sports if they are above this. I'm for this being above sports. I'm for this being above entertainment. I'm for this being above other things. I'm for this being above pleasure. I'm for the word of God taking a high place of honor in your life that God's word could be fine into your life and could be part of you, that you can be powerful. Because you, this is the only thing you've got to really fight the devil with, folks. Did you know that? This is what you've got to have to fight the enemy. And every, all of us have to fight it. Now, I, you know, take a look at me. I eat three square meals a day. I mean square meals a day. I really like really good meals. Square meal, you know, really square meals. <laughs> How about feeding your soul? How about giving your soul something? People are starved. Your soul is starved for the word of God. You take care of our body. We take care of all of these other things, but we are not really into the word to feed the inner man. That inner man, that soul, that spirit that God has placed within you needs this book. It needs to be fed. This is food for your soul and it will give you health and strength, but you've got to take it. Now, you have to take this word with the help of God into the rooms of your heart. David said, I hide this in my heart that I might not sin against you. You want to take with the help of God, you take his book and his word into the areas of your heart. You take it into the room of relationship. This book will give you the right tell you how to have a right relationship with people. You know what it says to husbands? You know what it says? If you take this into the room of, of marital relationship, it says, husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church. Husbands, God says, love your wife as God loved the church. But my wife isn't perfect. And it didn't say anything about that in here. <laughs> this is God speaking. He didn't say, husbands love perfect wives. I have news for you, there aren't any. <laughs> there are no perfect husbands. It says husbands love, honor your husband. Wives, honor your husband as Christ, as the church honors Christ. Incredible. Children, listen to your parents. It tells you relationships. It will save your life and your marriage. All the divorces in the church, it's, in, it's terrible, sad, heartbreak. I read years ago where 
young, where couples prayed together and read the Bible together daily, that there was only one divorce in 450. Today, the evangelical church has as many divorces as the world has. It's not in this book. It is not in this book. They are not putting the word in their heart and in their life. You need to put the word into the financial room of your life. Go into the, into the treasure of your life, into the finances. So much problem with finances. This book has the answer to your finances. It will bring you out. It will save you. It will dis it teaches you how to live correctly in every area of your life. It's Jesus talking to you and he's got the answer. I tell you tonight, there's the answer to every problem in this room is in this book. The answer to every problem in this room is in this book. The problem in your home is in this book. Honor this word. Get it into your heart and into your life because it will save your life. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. It can save your home. It can save you in every aspect. Your problem is answered. It's here. It's answered. If the doctor came to you and said you were terribly anemic, you're dying, your blood is down and you're in a terrible physical condition, you've got to start eating. One meal would not do it. If you will eat right, he said, your health will return. If you will get into this book with all of your heart and soul and pay attention and love the word and honor this book, it will bring light to you. There's light in this book book. There's life in this book for you. Praise God. Hallelujah. The answers are here. God didn't leave us without answers. He's not leaving you with nowhere to go and no answer. The answer is here. Oh, if only you would understand this is what you've got to love and listen and push it in, put it into the area, the closed rooms of your heart. Bring this light into the area of your heart that's shut off, the room that's shut off where there's no forgiveness. You shut certain things off in your heart and mind. And some of you have very sad rooms. You've closed off those closets. Some of you have been abused as children, been abused sexually. Terrible things have happened to some of you and you shut that room out and there's hurt, hurt that's never been dealt with. I want you to take and let God help you as painful as it is to open that room up and put the light of Jesus with the word of God into that room and healing will come to you. There's healing in this book for your soul. Hallelujah. There's healing for marriage. There's healing for broken relationships. There's healing for bad memories. There's healing in the word of the Lord. This word is not imperfect. This book is perfect. It is God's word. It is eternal. It will last. I want to tell you that when the heavens pass away and this earth is no more, this word will last forever. It is true forever and ever and ever. I ask you tonight, ask God, help me to love that book. Now, read, now, now don't, when you get saved, don't start reading the Old Testament. Read the, new, the Gospels of Jesus first. Read the New Testament first. Get the Gospels into you. Then it go back into the old. But get the Gospels into you. Get the words of Jesus into you. And the love of Jesus into your life. And get it. Just walk with him through those pages. And listen to him. And absorb it. And take it into your body. And into your spirit. And bring it into every area of your life into the rooms that nobody knows about that are shut down let light shine into those areas of your life into your mind and into your soul and quicken you and you're going to be a winner because you've got the word hallelujah and Satan can't stand up against this book praise God
you will win. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Take it into every area of your life. You can't, you can't just let the Bible speak to you about the things you'd like to hear about. We, uh, we, you can't just listen to the Bible and the things you want it to say. And we all would like the good, the in, interesting, encouraging. Take the whole thing. Have a balanced diet. Eat some vegetables that you don't like. <laughs> and let it give you strength and health and become the person. Now, the New Testament, God's word in the, the New Testament is what you've got to go by. The old, you will, you'll, you'll learn it and it'll help you to understand the new, but you've got to get the new. Some years ago, I was uh, asked to speak with the St. Paul Society here in New York City, the Catholic St. Paul Society. I was to meet one of the priests who is, who is educated and learned it in converting Protestants. But uh, no, don't, don't laugh. He's, he's a, he was a good man and a smart man and a, and a great man. We had a group of folks there that were wanting to know what was right. So I met with him, and it was a, not a debate like you would stand up and debate, but he talked and I talked, and this audience were listening. So I asked him, said, now, to, to have a discussion to this priest from St. Paul's Society, said, we have to agree on the book we're going to discuss. So I said, let's take the Catholic Bible. Let's just talk about the Catholic Bible and discuss the Catholic Bible. And I said, fine. So I said, now let's just take one issue in the Catholic Bible, infant baptism. So where in the Catholic Bible do you have infant baptism? I said, it isn't in the Catholic Bible. He said, no, it's not. I, he, he saw that I understood. He said, no, it's, it's true. It's not in there. I said, how can you teach that and practice that? It's not in your Bible. He said, but you see, I go by the church as well as the Bible. I said, you mean that you will take what men have said since this was written in preference to the men that were with Jesus? I said, I will stick with the original. I will stay with the book. And we'll have, a, he said, well, we'll have a parting of the ways. There's no way we can discuss. I said, no, because, listen, these men that wrote this New Testament were all other than Paul, who was part of it, got the revelation, who was with them, were with Jesus. They understood him. They were the first generation. They interpreted Jesus. Listen, folks, Jesus is the light of the world. He is the light of the world. There is no further light. There is no light added. He is the light, period. The New Testament refers back to him. They interpreted him to the church. They explained what he said. And if you will read what they said about him, because the four gospels are not, uh, don't give us all that we would like, but the New Testament finishes it up. They were with him more. They understood. They have given us the light. Build it on that. Now read a Bible you understand. I beg of you tonight, get the word into your spirit, into your soul. Learn, love this book. Take time with the book. Take time to read the Bible and take the word of God into your soul, into your spirit and believe what it says. When you read it, believe it. Ask God, give us faith to believe it and receive the blessings and the promises. And then do you need the sword of the spirit? As Ephesians 6 says, and you put on the, all of the armor of God, and then you take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. 
You can't stand up to the devil. He's coming out in his last days in great power and in great might. And what you have to have is the sword of the spirit. You can't depend on somebody else. You can't depend on even the church. You got to know God for yourself. You've got to have that book in your spirit. Take the word of the Lord and put it through the enemy. When he comes against you, have the word, have it in you. Know the book and ask God to put it in your mind. Bring it in, hide it into the, all of the areas of my life that when Satan comes, I've got it, hallelujah. I've got the answer. Jesus met the devil, not with psychology and not with a lots of other stuff, which I'm not against, but it's not the answer to the real problems. The problem is facing the devil. You need the word of the living God. You need to, the sword of the spirit to pierce him through, that when he attacks you, that you can answer and that you can rise above the problems and the circumstances and all that Satan throws across your path, that you'll rise up victorious in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 Because Satan attempted me with fear. I battled with fear all of my life. But I got through it, reading the word and into it. I got Psalm 91 into my spirit. I've carried it on me all of these 60 some years. Not that there's, there's anything magic about it, but I want to keep reminding myself of that verse that God gave me, of the word of the Lord that brought me out of a terrible situation and a terrible darkness and gave light and brought me into the ministry and preserved me till this hour. I want to know this book and love this book. Honor the book. Honor this Bible. Honor God by honoring his word. Place it in a place of honor in your life. Above non-essentials. Above things that are not. This is Jesus in a written form. It's his word right out of the mouth of Jesus speaking right to you. Put it into your heart, into your soul, into your relationships, into your social life, into your private life, into everything, till every area of your life you respond with truth. You respond to every situation. Naturally, because you've hit it in there. You've placed it in your life. And when the situation comes, the word comes. Hallelujah. The word will be there. The truth will be there to guide you. Hallelujah. And to see you through. Hallelujah. There's power in this book. There's life in this book. It's a powerful. It's alive. It's a living thing. Love it. Learn it. Live it. Then ask God to let me live it out. Let me live out your book. Let me live out the promises. Let me live. Let the word live in me. Let me live in the word of God. That what I do, hallelujah, is based on this book. That I can have your blessing and have you. Oh, you were so fortunate in this country. You are so fortunate. It is more valuable than anything that could ever be given to you. It's more valuable than an inheritance. In fact, David said, King David said, I take this as my inheritance. So the greatest inheritance you could have is God's word. It's an inheritance. You are privileged. I visit, ministered in China some years ago. and Then I ministered in Siberia. Never forget in Siberia, in Irkutsk, uh, on the, the capital of Siberia, way out and way out in the center of Siberia, incredible on Lake Baikal. And I was preaching and we were giving out Bibles, New Testaments and, and the Gospel of John as much as we had at the end of the meeting. This was just when the Iron Curtain was coming down and we could have big meetings. The lady came up to me, I'll never forget it. She said to me, I don't want that gospel of John. I said, why? She said, because that's not the whole Bible. She said, I saw 
a Bible one time. She said, I saw one. She was so thrilled, I saw one. I saw a Bible, she said, and uh, it was bigger than that. It was a big book. I wish you'd give me the big book. I would love to have the whole thing. I saw one. I saw one. Some years ago, President Carter made a, made a switch with certain spies, Soviet spies we, we had in this country for, for a Jewish uh, man who was in trouble with the Soviet Union, who was a very brilliant and was, was against communism, great Jewish man, and a Christian by the name of George Evans. George Evans was one of the great leading Christian men, evangelicals of Russia. He was in prison, and President Carter traded these spies that we had in this country for these two men. When George Evans came to visit us in our church, never forget him, never. He said his father, of course, died in prison, died from being in prison so much. He had, George had, Vince had spent years and years in prison. I forget how many times and how many years in the worst of prisons. He said, what they got before was I was printing Bibles in basements. We had a movable press that we took it to people's basements in hiding and would print parts of the Bible and give it to them. And he said, so this is why I was in prison because I was printing the Bible. And he said some other things that I won't take time, but he it was incredible. He said, when I got off the plane in New York, they put me in a hotel right out by Kennedy Airport. And when they took me into the hotel room, he said, now I've been in prison and I've been sleeping on little cots like this. I saw they had a king size bed in that room. This is what he thought. He said, there must be gonna be several men gonna sleep in here tonight because <laughs> he said, I've never seen anything like this in my life. He said, can you imagine? He says, can you? he couldn't believe it. One person slept in a bed like that. Then he went to the drawer and he opened the drawer and there was a holy Bible by the Gideons. And he opened that drawer and he saw that book. I can't tell it like he did. He couldn't. He saw a holy Bible and he took it. He hugged it. He began to cry. He was weeping, weeping, crying. And so one of the attendants came in and heard him crying and said, what, what's wrong? Mr. Vins, what, what are you crying? He said, I've given my life for this book, but it's in English. You people have everything. We don't have it. He said, I would love to see a Russian Bible. She went out that night and got back out on the early hours of the morning. Where she went, we don't know. But he said she knocked on my door before daybreak and handed me a Russian Bible. I embraced it, hugged it, said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. You're so privileged. Believe me, it's worth more than diamonds. Believe me, it's worth more than gold. It's worth more than inheritance. It's worth more than all you're fighting about or worried about. You've got the word of the living God with light. How to serve him. You've got light on heaven. You've got light about how to leave this world when you come to the end that you aren't going to be by yourself. And he said, I'll go with you in the valley of the shadow of death. I'll be with you. You've got light for when you have trouble and troubles come to you. There's light in the darkness coming out of this book for you. And there's heaven. There's a glorious revelation of what waits for those that are faithful. Believe me, I'm an old Oh man, your life isn't going to live forever. You aren't going to be here. We're not going to be here soon. I'll be gone. But I'm so thankful tonight that I have a hope in the future. There's a glorious tomorrow. There's, a, there's light in this book. And tonight, I beg you tonight, in the name of Jesus,
Love this book. Learn this book. Live out this book. And hallelujah, you will never be sorry. It'll give you the fighting strength. It'll be the sword that you need. It'll be the light in the valley. It'll be the song in the night. It'll be there when you need it. He's given you something. Love God. Love his word. Serve God. Learn his word and live it out and be powerful for God. God bless you, everyone. Hallelujah. 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 Give God thanks, beloved. Hallelujah. I was just thinking of an altar call after the word tonight, and um, the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart immediately as Pastor Crandall was speaking and just ministering from the word tonight, and God told me to read some verses of Scripture to you prior to the altar call. And in Joshua chapter 1, verse 11, Joshua rises up and he, he speaks this incredible verse. We hardly ever preach on this one verse of Scripture in verse 11, where it's, he rises up. Verse 10 says, And Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the host and command the people, saying, Prepare your victuals, for within three days you shall pass over this Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God giveth you to possess. And so we've got Joshua who, who speaks an incredible word of encouragement and faith and says that we're going to, th three days, we're going to move into this land. And you, you've got to wonder, where did the man get this kind of a faith to be able to direct and guide the people into the land that he was going, they were going into possess. This is full of faith. He says, get the people ready. We're going across and we're going to take and receive what God has given to us. Where did that faith come from? Well, you begin to read from verse 1. Just look at Joshua chapter 1, verse 1. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. It's over. What you had with Moses is dead. It's over. It's finished. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. So here is God speaking into the heart of this man, Joshua. It's God, as exactly as Pastor Crandall said. This is God speaking, and it's been noted so we can read it for ourselves. So God's speaking into Joshua's life, and he says to him in verse 3, Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses." from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, un and unto the great sea towards the going down of the sun shall be your coast. All of this land is for you. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. There's nobody who's going to come against you and succeed. They may rise up, but they will be defeated. This land we're going into, I've given it all to you, and he defines the coast from the great sea to the sea, from the top to the bottom. He says, it's all yours. And anybody in this land that rises up against you, they will rise, but they will be defeated. They will not succeed against you. And he goes on. He says, no man will stand before you all the days of thy life. Not just a week, a month, or one year, or two years. He says, all the days of your life. So even when we reach Brother Crandall's age, he's got victory today as we have victory. All the days of our life, he continues to live in victory, and so will you. Then he goes on to say, he says, and I, as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, 
nor forsake thee. So you begin to understand now how he can stand and rise and say to the people, we're going over to take this land. Get ready. We're going over and we're going to take it. Where does the faith come from? The faith came because he had God speak speaking into his spirit that nobody can stand against him. All the days of his life, he will live in the victory of his God. And God says, I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. God will not fail thee. He will get that rent on time. He will not fail you. He will heal your broken heart as was prayed tonight. God will heal you. He says, I will not fail thee or forsake thee. And then he goes on, verse 6, Be strong and of good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. It's come to pass. Divide it. That's what we're doing with the word. We're giving you the promises of God. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left. In other words, he says, when you get into difficulties, do not call Bob. Do not call Mary. Do not get on the phone. Don't turn to this person. Don't turn to that person. Don't turn to the psychologist. Don't turn to that psychiatrist. They can help you in certain areas, but if you want to know how to have great victory, be strong and courageous in my word. Don't turn from it. This side or that side. Amen. And he says, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. So wherever you go, wherever you go, you will prosper in the hand of the Lord. Your life before you. Young people, listen. God is going to guide you into all that he has for you. And then verse 8, he says, and this book of the law, which is the whole counsel of God, the word of God, shall not depart out of thy mouth. Folks, when it's in your heart, you'll speak it. If you've got American Idol in your heart, you will talk about American Idol coming up soon. If you've got football in your heart, you're probably looking at the Patriots to get the Super Bowl. That's what's going to come out. But if the book is in your heart, when you speak, that's what's going to come out. And he says to Joshua, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. And the word meditate simply means to chew the cud, like a cow would take a big bunch of grass, eat it, swallow it, regurgitate it, bring it into its mouth, and sit down on a nice cool part of the pasture and just go, mmm, mmm, mmm. Mm. How we don't understand how a brown cow eats green grass and makes white milk. We don't understand it. But it all happens in the meditation. We don't understand how God wins the battles for us, but we know whatever race we are, whatever background we are, we eat the Word of God, we meditate upon it, and out of our life comes one victory after another victory after another victory after another victory after another victory. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's how it happens, beloved. Amen. Tonight, you may have gotten away from the Word of God and this is the exhortation of the Holy Spirit to come back to the Word. There was a prayer. God spoke directly into the heart of Pastor William tonight. And he said, there's somebody here with a broken heart. That person needs to come. We've had prayer. You need to come to this altar tonight. Tonight this altar is open. 
for those that are going through some trying times, we're going to pray for you tonight. We, we pray about everything. So we will pray for you. And we will pray that when you get home, as you open the book, God will begin to reveal his answers to you. Amen. Let's stand together. Now, Father, the word has been clearly, clearly spoken tonight. And now we ask, Lord, for those who need prayer. They're going through a trial. They need us to stand with them. Those with a broken heart, they need us to stand with them. Lord, we know that you are going to come through for them as you have declared in your word. In Jesus' name, amen. This altar is open. Please, let's sing a song. Head out either side of, to the exits. Come out of your seats right now. Come to this altar and we'll stand with you and we'll pray in Jesus' name. Joshua believed the word of the Lord. He believed it. That's why he rose up in verse 11 and he said, get ready, we're going forward. Because he believed the word of the Lord. And uh, it, two things just came to mind is that God has spoken to those with a broken heart. I can't just get away from that. God spoke it. And if God spoke it, he had you in mind, whoever that may be here tonight. He had you in mind. So you've got to believe the word of the Lord. God spoke a word and he says, I'm going to heal you. Now you've got to receive that by faith and say, God, I receive it. And now I'm going forward as somebody being healed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You've got to believe it. This is, this is what we talk about, believing the Word of God by faith and going forward in it. And for the rest of you who are here tonight, for whatever reason, whatever is going on in your life, believe tonight. God specifically, specifically took time just to keep going over that in this book is your answer. I'm going to pray tonight above what the doctors have said, above what people have said, above what bosses have said, above what relations have said. People wound us. People say mean things. Problems come. But this book will never change. You can depend on it every day of your life. You can depend on it. And I'm going to pray tonight that when you get home and you open this book, and you begin to read the Psalms, the Proverbs, and the New Testament, the boom, God is going to begin speaking into your heart. Because when you get a word from God and you read it, it's life. It, it doesn't matter what the devil is saying. It doesn't matter what people have said. You rise up in the strength of that book. Amen? Raise your hands tonight. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you that you have spoken very specifically. First of all, that there's those with a broken heart. For those, Lord, here tonight that have a broken heart from some means or another, we know that you've spoken, and because you've spoken, you mean to heal. And Lord, that prayer has gone forth, and now we stand in faith that, Lord, that broken heart is on the mend in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And now, Lord, tonight, for everybody at this altar, I pray, I'm praying specifically that every person who's heard the word preached tonight will have faith rising in their heart, will go home and open that book and put it, turn the TV off, not even touch the TV, but go home, open the book, put it on the bed, get on your knees, open the pages and begin reading and say, God, will you speak to me? Now, Lord, I pray that you will give revelation tonight, not tomorrow. I'm asking tonight that you're going to give men and women revelation. You're going to start speaking into their spirit the great truths of love and of kindness and of mercy and of forgiveness and of grace and of long-suffering and of peace. Whatever they have need of, Speak it into them by your word. We can pray, but Lord, you're the one that speaks into our spirit being. You're the one that revives us. Now revive us in Jesus' name, I pray. And we'll give you the thanks and all the glory. Amen and amen. Now give him praise tonight, be beloved. Glory to God. Glory to God. 
Hallelujah. Lord, we trust you tonight. God, no man will stand before us and win the battle. God, you've given us the victory again and again and again. And we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.